Köszönöm szépen, nagyon nagy szeretettel és tisztelettel like köszöntök mindenkit. Csikós Attila, Attila mondja azt, hogy a gyermekkor történelmen kívül. A gyermekkor children live in what is the world the children dream for and what is the world where we adults also long to be back to um, the play and sports and being fans of a sport club is something that we try to remember as adults and we want to bring back the world that we experience as children The UN and um, um, chart, uh, chart of uh, the right of the child uh, um, has obviously set up lots of very important rules and principles, including the right of participation of the children should be provided for in all cases. Also, WHO stated that child is our investment for the future societies. We strongly believe that it is very true. Uh, since uh, 2010, the Hungarian government has been put a lot of effort with all its measures and incentives to keep the whole principle of strengthening uh, families um, in mind, uh, because that serves as a basis for a society, and that entails uh, strengthening the rights of children, and everything should be about children. It is very important today where uh, um, children's rights are not um, dedicated to one single organization, but several organizations, bodies, and agencies deal with children's rights. And therefore, I would like to welcome um, uh, um, the uh, initiative of uh, uh, Ferenc Manuel Institute of Comparative Law um, for organizing this event. I think it's very important, very crucial to have a closer look to the uh, right of children and have various aspects um, to that and sensitize all these aspects. And of course, we will identify synergies and we need to take appropriate and suitable steps for the interest of the children. Of course, going back to the beginning of my speech, the world of children is not only unique because everything is believable and everything seems to be true, but also because uh, children can embrace everything and children can't make a distinction between good and bad. And this is where adults need to play a, uh, play a crucial role and so do families, states and churches. A very important question is also, of course, we have a saying that dem democracy means that I have the right to do anything that does not uh, viola, uh, violate the right of others. And in this spirit, we really need to think about it. What sort of rights do not violate the rights of children? What are the rights that basically goes beyond that? that and what sort of rights we need to ensure to, uh, to provide safety to children. We are very well aware of, of all the risks and uh, threats to children, and we need to be very humble when we start thinking about it and discussing these sort of threats and risks in order to make sure that our children will be able to grow up mentally and physically in a safe environment that also makes them to be an important part of the society later on. We will, uh, we hope that we will have a very successful conference here today, and I really hope that all the various discussions and aspects and ideas will be later incorporated and embedded into the legislative framework in order to ensure the rights of children. And last but not least, I'd like to also thank to the organizers of the conference and, of course, the participants for being here with us. And to uh, and we mustn't forget that we are in unique. Uh, we are experiencing unique times. Uh, and because, of course, now we are in December, heading towards Christmas time, when we were expecting a child and we were hoping. Nagy szeretettel és tisztelettel köszöntöm. I would like to welcome you. 
at today's conference. I believe that this conference will be very exciting. It's a great honor and joy for our institution, uh, Sports Appiencia, to host this event. I believe that when um, the organizers made a decision to have this location as the venue of the event, they did not only consider the central location of our institution, but also the spirit of our institution. And probably that's what made them decide to host this event. So we are uh, representing a religious um, college that is maintained by three religious orders. Um, and we are, of course, very active in the field of uh, uh, education. Uh, a lot of uh, our colleagues deal with children. And this Sapientia Institute also prepares youngsters for um, educational activities, also in religious studies, but in other areas. But also, they would be also active in areas of child protection protection or anything to do with children. I believe that the past years in our communities also um, made us more aware of the fact that dealing with children, taking care of children is not self-evident. It's not an activity that seemed for us um, priests that it would just go or take its own course. There are so many things that we need to focus on. Uh, human dignity is a very important aspect. We need to respect human dignity because we need to remember that we work in an environment where there are lots of vulnerable and open children. And I would like to mention that um, I think a lot of people are here with us who are monks, uh, priests, and we must, rem we must remember that we are involved in enhancing human dignities. And actually, we do impact projects in this uh, uh, context. And now I'd like to commemorate Maria Ruden, who had just recently passed away, and she was very active in our college. And uh, Priest Didak, who as a uh, monk also took huge steps in these projects to make sure that all these projects can be implemented in the field of child protection and education. So again, I'd like to welcome all of you, and I really do hope that you will enjoy this uh, conference, and it will be very fruitful for you, and, uh, and God bless you all. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, I would like to welcome you here today on behalf of the Association of Children's Rights at our Inter international conference on the interdisciplinary day. I would like to welcome Mr. Attila Benedek, uh, Deputy State Secretary, for attending the conference and giving us an opening remarks. And also, I'd like to thank to the rector for the uh, opening words and also for his institution for hosting our events. I would like to also thank to the co-organizers, especially uh, uh, Ferenc Madla Institute of Comparative uh, Law and the Association of Comparative Law to organize this event together. I would also like to welcome Michael, uh, Mr. Mikhail Pawelko uh, from Poland, the Polish Embassy, Kristina uh, uh, from um, from the Institute of Children, right? the, the representatives of churches, NGOs, and all experts representing the children rights profession. I would like to thank you for attending us, um, uh, representing so many areas.
rise of this issue. And I do hope that your contribution will pro uh, contribute to our interesting dialogue and a platform. I would like to thank Aaron, Gergő, Máté, Zorka, Petra, Hanna, Jóicsi, Inge, Margareta, Katalin, Matyi, Balin, Kristoff for being here today and participating in this event. And an addition, and I would like to thank to the 300 kids who gave us the opportunity to um, to also have an exhibition in addition to our um, event and to make them hear the, uh, her, uh, their voices heard. So in the foyer, you will be able to see the exhibition that provides as a framework for our um, uh, conference. In addition to the drawings, you will be able to read the task and stories based on which the kids were involved in our projects and kids, apart from some of the older kids, but most of the kids do not no, uh, are, are not aware of the various documents, including the UN Charter on the uh, right of the child, obviously, but still they drew it. Um, according to the Charter, every child needs to have an environment where he is loved, um, um, taken care of, is respected, where he has a home, where he is, uh, um, his opinion is asked, and he has the right to make sure that he can live without violence, uh, to grow up in a family, and to uh, have all the nurturing uh, uh, that is required for a healthy um, uh, growing up, to be, to be a child, to live like a child, to play, and to make sure that his opinion is respected and heard, and, uh, the, and his interest is always given priority over the interest of adults. So the event's uh, um, main objective is to point out the various levels and layers of this context and what we need to consciously focus on in order to make sure the children can feel safe. And we also want to point out that for this safety, to create this safety, we need interdisciplinary approach involving various areas and expertise. So these various aspects and professions need to be considered together and next to each other. And be becoming a uh, aware of each other's activities will help us to enforce and reinforce uh, the uh, right of children. And obviously, we could even expand uh, these expertise and dialogue. And this uh, is very much confirmed by the huge interest um, shown to this event. But now, please allow me to focus on a completely different uh, aspect. I'm very thankful to you that in the uh, safe, in the, uh, in the uh, church, in families, in the justice, and in the society, and all the other panels, and in the uh, day of law, in the uh, CRC um, panels, you uh, lots of very important and respect well respected experts are participating and i'm very certain that their reflections will be uh, um, very important uh, 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 fruits for thoughts in our everyday life now i'd like to also uh, will ask you to listen to our roundtable discussion to our entire conference and look at the exhibitions I mentioned earlier to have more of a deeper understanding about the various challenges children and their caretakers are um, facing these days and listen to the various questions that children are formulating in this context. So we'll have a very long day ahead of us today and tomorrow as well. And therefore, I'd like to respectfully ask all of the presenters to keep their time frame in order to respect the rights of the children who are here with us today. I would like to thank you 
a very interesting discussion, and it would be an honor for me if you have any questions, you would contact me. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome all of you. And I want to start with a very interactive um, part of my presentation. I really hope that it will work out. I will talk about communication. And when we are communicating, of course, the starting point is whether or not we understand each other. So if we raise the question, do we really think about the same thing? So do we mean the same thing by the same question? We'll see whether or not this um, little game will work. The main task here is obviously <laughs> would be better for a communication expert, but we are lawyers, or some of us at least, and we de work as mediators or in any areas dealing with children. Uh, obviously, we need to exercise communication skills in our everyday work, both as professionals, but also in our everyday private life. So looking at our um, everyday life, obviously, communication is vital. And what do we understand under communication? What does it mean to us? It's a very important question, too, as we know that there are huge differences uh, at least according to the literature uh, about the terminology. What do we understand as the main important, the most important function of communication? Is it conveying a message, information to the other party? Or is it rather uh, an expression of my relation towards the other party? Am I satisfied with this relation or not? Uh, if we are talking about communicating with children and communication between generations, then it would be an important element of this uh, that to have a really good and effective communication between us and to strengthen uh, the relations between us. Many to do so. Uh, I already have a question to you. So the first question is, uh, what do we understand by this terminology, communication? What does communication mean? So just uh, uh, please uh, just write a very, very short answer. What does communication mean to you? Oh, I already see the results. Excellent uh, dialogue, uh, a relationship, establishing relationship, connection, connectivity, uh, sentences, uh, but definitely connection. We see this in big letters. So it means that communication does not only mean a mere conveying of uh, in, uh, information, but uh, uh, really interaction, uh, real connection. So uh, some kind of psychological connection, the expression of this, all this belongs to communication. Now that we have a definition uh, for communication, let's continue with the next question. Uh, and now I would like to ask you, uh, what do you uh, me? What do you understand under this message? I would say. Uh, 90%, uh, I would uh, uh, say from the, off the cuff that 90% is fish uh, for those who have uh, uh, Nick with only capital letters. I searched in HM 10 random capital letters. Uh, and my first question is, do you have any idea what this message uh, could have meant. So this message from a teenager chatting who wrote these sentences, what uh, she or he could have meant, uh, I say the first, I have no idea, not the faintest. Well, actually, this would be my answer, but uh, I'm in a fortunate situation because I have uh, uh, two uh, boys, two sons, so I already have persons to turn to if I have a problem with such questions. But I see your answers, so no idea, or clothes, 
or um, social media, or yes, it's true. But now let's look at the next question. Uh, and so I'm asking for the cooperation of my colleague. So uh, mainly, most of you said no idea, not the faintest idea. What, what do you think? What does this mean? Are you per 18? Because, you know, that uh, uh, young people use social media, a uh, close size, no idea, Russian 18-year-olds, uh, age M. So uh, I see your answers here. Actually, this is a question. So what it means, this little abbreviation, actually, 18 years old, the nationality doesn't really play a role. But are you 18? This indeed means that with respect to uh, somebody who's 18 years old, uh, was the attitude. Now, the next question, what does the following expression mean? K for Y. What does it mean, this abbreviation? What do you think? OK. No, no, let's go back. Let's wait for the answers. OK. 4,000 years, care for you, key for you, no idea. Yes, it is. We are living in the digital age, uh, and and English plays a really central role in communication in the social media. Yes, it was okay for you. I don't know who gave this answer, but yes, that's uh, really uh, the good result. This is what it means. Okay for you. Okay for you. And then the next one, I won't have um, uh, many, I promise you, but I still have one more. OMG, oh my god. Uh, I have to uh, admit that uh, I had no idea what this meant, but my students uh, uh, told me, and I was so happy to have asked my, my sons earlier, because uh, otherwise I would not have any idea. So OMG, yes, oh my god. And now a little competition will follow. Uh, these are you. You have all these little images. These represent you. And now, uh, now the time will play a central role because we have a little competition. So answer fast to get more points. What does shipper mean? Uh, please answer as quick as you can. What does shipper mean? To uh, People fit together, uh, they are together, or they are, they are thinking that they are really the best. Uh, so answer one, two people fit together. OK, next question. Uh, maybe it's uh, a word known to you. We have the same possibilities, two people fit together. Uh, they are together in a group, or they are being uh, uh, super cool. Yes, it means being super cool, well, in a teenage language uh, in Hungarian. So what does uh, gengel mean? It's uh, again, a very colloquial Hungarian used by teenagers. So what do you think this means? So again, we have these four. Uh, possibilities. Maybe this is not so uh, difficult. Yes, it's being together in a gang. This term now, what does it mean, crucial? Uh, sometimes it's written with an H, sometimes without, so crush. Or does it mean uh, you like someone, you agree with someone? Uh, uh, you flirt with someone, you do not like someone. Yes, it means that crush or means that uh, you, you like someone. Uh, what does it mean, Adam? Something like, meaning something like give. So what 
does this word mean to you? Again, I like someone, I don't like someone, I agree with someone, I flirt with someone. So these are the first, uh, these are the four possibilities. Yes, it means I agree with someone. You're very good at this, as it seems. So let's see who won. Uh, let's see the leaderboard. Wow, it was a very tight uh, competition, so time was also important. So uh, congratulations to Kotosh uh, for being so good with this teenager language. And now let's, let's quit this part. Uh, uh, and now let's concentrate on the PowerPoint presentation. This isn't it yet. Let's wait for uh, the presentation. So, okay, now let's deal with theory. Uh, at least let's uh, uh, look at some thoughts connected to uh, communication. So understanding one another. Uh, if I have some technical problems, fortunately there are colleagues here helping me. So, so I would like to ask uh, Almos to show the next slide. Okay, so concerning questions about communication, just a little overview about definitions. I don't really want to go to the very beginnings, uh, go back to the very beginnings, but the, the human communication uh, has a huge literature uh, uh, development, so beginning from drawings in the graves and then verbal communication, written communication, all these known stages. And uh, I tend to say that we tend to return back to the cave drawings, though we do not have uh, 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 caves anymore, but we have these emojis uh, and uh, we have the, all these drawings on the mobile phone. These are uh, much quicker um, and we uh, did a uh, huge research in the eastern part of Hungary. I come from Mishkos University about the use of computers and internet. Uh, we also investigated vulnerable groups, uh, young ch children, uh, youth, uh, and disadvantageous uh, people. And concerning emojis, uh, they had absolutely no problem. So even those who were uh, functional analphabetics, because for them emojis were really easy to use and simple. So we can say that this uh, uh, IT uh, uh, society communication plays a central role, and with the help of these technologies we communicate, but uh, actually uh, there is a special approach to this, not only because we see uh, the, the uh, private role played by English language in digital space, but also be because the communication through these media uh, makes it impossible to use nonverbal communication, whereas, as we all know, uh, nonverbal communication makes Eight, makes out 80% of conveying the whole message. And if I send an SMS, although youth, uh, teenagers don't really even use that anymore, but if I send a short message, uh, the nonverbal part of communication is simply missing. And this can easily lead to conflicts. On the other hand, there are also many hypotheses. Uh, uh, in, just look at this charming young man on the slide. No, 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 let's please go back. Please admire this charming young man, his face. His name is Kim Ti-young, and he is the singer of a South Korean uh, pop group. And you, Te Amo, uh, Te Amo was written on a women's toilet uh, door, and uh, well, 
Obviously, I, I was having lots of ideas. What was the reason for having this face there? I had many hypotheses. Probably uh, uh, the person uh, really admired this singer. And uh, this was in the legal faculty where this uh, women's toilet was where I found this image uh, sticked on the door. Uh, so uh, uh, actually, I also like this kind of music. Uh, so I actually myself even could have written something like that. So maybe we have false hypotheses. We uh, add a lot of information that might not be true at all. So from the point of view of communication, especially if you communicate with young people, as, uh, uh, stereotypes and hypotheses uh, 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 blur the picture and disturb it uh, uh, very often, especially if we have we don't have this non-verbal uh, communication part that would support and help us in really uh, interpreting communication well. And now let's get to the next question. Uh, what kind of hypothesis we have at all. So what is that we think in connection with communication about how young people communicate? And uh, this is why I mentioned that communication has such a, a huge history. Uh, so uh, we would say it's so natural that we, we all communicate, no problem. Uh, all babies learn communication. Uh, learn to communicate just as they learn to walk. So there's nothing special about this, we could say. However, is this really true? Is other, other hypothesis also true that uh, children nowadays, Z generation or of our generation, uh, they already are being socialized in digital space, that they are uh, so uh, real experts of this? Uh, so that they are really digitally literate, they have all these competencies, and through this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, they can really express themselves in this space, and they can express everything that is important to them in this digital space. This is also a hypothesis, but is it true? Uh, and uh, it is also important for us to find out whether this is true, because uh, be it in an official form or in an unofficial form. Uh, so uh, only what is being conveyed to me is what I know. Everything else is just a hypothesis. So what do we know about these generations? What are our hypotheses? I highlighted too, as we are here in a conference on children's rights, so alpha generation, so those being born after 2010, who are now 12, 13 years old, so they are children. Uh, uh, not uh, also uh, um, according to law. And we also have the Z generation, the Z generation. Uh, uh, who can also be regarded to belong to this age group. But uh, do we look at the same way at a teenager as to a younger child uh, age group? Uh, as older one gets, the more mature the personality becomes. And of course, the uh, uh, communication channels uh, will change. Uh, and. Yes, I will talk a lot about this, uh, and we will hear a lot about this today and also tomorrow and all the hypotheses around this. We know that there are also criticism about uh, uh, how to structure these age groups. Why 2010? Why not uh, 2008? Where should be the borders of the age groups? And can at all uh, we speak about such clear age group borders? But there are some general common characteristics for these age groups, uh, just as in the case of uh, adults. Uh, there are psychological attitudes. It's just a question in the digital space. Am I being socialized in a digital space? And if so, how does it 
influence uh, uh, me? Am I in a much better situation than those earlier generations or not? Uh, am, or am I more vulnerable and at all? Uh, my psyche, how uh, can it adjust or adapt itself to all this huge amount of information? And I have to uh, find a system to deal with all this amount of information. Uh, and in, in social media, we know anyway that uh, n there are many, many narcissistic uh, people. There is a huge pressure uh, on, on people being active in this space. And that can be a problem if some but is, for example, an introverted person. So also, we must remember that there are some certain anxieties, social anxieties, that are quite typical for these generations, are uh, much more present than what we used to have in the past. So the question is, how much does it depend uh, uh, on the fact that they are socializing in this space? And of course, they are much more vulnerable than they used to, we used to be. And also, there are unique characteristics of communication that we talked about uh, shortly, but we will also. And also, cultural um, characteristics, um, the world of today's generation is so different than what we had. My uh, children showed me lots of memes, um, even when they were uh, middle school uh, aged, and there was nothing interesting. I really didn't understand it, but there was a story, a cultural context that they were aware of. Uh, I know, so I still have five minutes. Okay, thank you. So anyway, so this is a different kind of communications we are having here now, right? Um, Anyway, so uh, in order to be able to understand what is important for them and what is a, a comfortable environment for them, I really need to have lots of additional information on their culture. And this is the cohort generation factor. So. Uh, is it true when uh, when people say that the alpha generation cohort uh, generator is the elephant uh, of September and everything what's happened afterwards? So all these collective memories uh, will be in their mind when they are getting older. And obviously, this was a neg very negative thing, but it is in their collective um, memories. And also, obviously, we, our generation, has collective memories. Um, well, when it comes to communication, we mustn't just remember the side, but of course, we will talk about it um, later today on this conference. But anyway, so the communication is not just about us communicating with the child and trying to understand what they are trying to tell us and try to decode their dreams and whether or not we interpret it properly when we are communicating with them. For us, it was, or for me, it was very um, good to read that when I read from psychological expert, when the uh, kids are arguing with us, it is all about deepening of our um, relationship. It really made me more relaxed because my youngest son really attacks every single word I say out loud. And often we have huge fights and arguments. And at the be um, of course, at the beginning, I'm always convinced that I'm right. But after like five sentences, um, it, um, oh, I become so uncertain because uh, of his questions, because uh, when I'm arguing with my child, it's all about also getting to know each other, to understand our arguments, um, to see yet another side of mine. So anyway, so there are a lot of things um, that are contributing to this relationship and the communication. But now, looking at, at uh, the same issue from the professional point of view, when I'm talking to a child who's, that is not my child, so it is um, the success of this communication depends on so many factors. When, for example, the child uh, is having difficulties to express itself because they usually just chat on the internet and they don't verbalize things. But again, my younger child, the telephone, he never uses for making phone calls. He doesn't like making phone calls, but I said, it's called telephone, so you are supposed to talk here. No, he doesn't. He communicates, but only in writing. But by the time I am able to write to the text messages he sends to me, it takes forever. So for me, it's a huge challenge because 
because often I'm not quite sure which one of his answers I'm answering, because while I'm answering one text, there is yet another five coming in. So, um, But I'm trying to answer all of his questions, but he would never call because that's the generation. But anyway. So they are communicating in writing. But when it comes to communication with like, authorities, um, it is through verbal communication for a youngster. So how can an expert uh, know what his challenges are, where he needs support? It is through communication, verbal communication. But if the other side, the other party, namely the child, is not um, used to this, for example, he is just reluctant to talk, then it can go really wrong. And that can create problems. And I know that my five minutes is probably over. That was um, um, that I was told to keep. Anyway, uh, there is one more thing I still want to say. Namely, um, there are more and more young people um, are suffering from verbal disorders. Uh, we don't really know why. And because often they are associated with ADHD and other issues, and it seems that they have behavioral issues, and maybe it seems that they don't really care about the outside world and um, their own parents and um, professional experts are not important to them. They are not. They are. They don't consider them as partners, but also uh, sometimes these kids really have difficulties to understand our questions. So it's not about not w- being uh, able or wanting to cooperate, but they can't because they don't understand the question. So uh, children who have to undergo any sort of authority procedures, maybe because of, of um, some behavior issues. Well, what we can see um, um, on our study that about 70 to 90 percent of them actually struggle with verbal communication. But statistics show that um, this is overproportionate. So it just shows that many parts of the communication is not right and not suitable. And I strongly hope that uh, today's conference will help us to talk about it, not only because we will talk and communicate among each other, and we will be able to communicate with youngsters and all the lovely young um, uh, kids here who are with us here today, um, hopefully will also share their experience and their opinion with us. So thank you very much for your attention and I do promise that um, my written presentation that we will send out to you will be much more detailed.